Hello and welcome to Planet Zoo. Today's the start of a brand new project that I've been prepping behind the scenes for quite a while. After three and a half years and thousands of hours that I've put into Planet Zoo, I'm venturing into the unknown. I'm starting a franchise zoo. After all this time, for all the weird, wonderful and, well, downright wacky stuff that I've done in Planet Zoo, I really have barely scratched the surface with the franchise mode and I've been wanting to check out an idea. It is one of those big concept ideas I occasionally come up with, so true to form, this is going to be a franchise zoo with a bit of a twist. This is going to be my attempt at an all-animal franchise. Indeed, starting from a big fat zero, as you do with franchise mode, we'll be building the zoo up to eventually include every animal in the game, all in one zoo. At least that's the idea, fingers crossed. I know space-wise I can definitely do this. Where there will be a problem is managing the money, managing the staff, keeping the visitors happy, also the huge volume of animals that are going to be coming through. Yeah, that scares me a little bit. I think when we have trouble, that's where there's going to be trouble. But hey, that's the whole point of this challenge. I want to see if it can be done. And if it can be done, we'll do it. There's a couple of other rules I've built into this challenge, but we'll go through that as we're going through the game itself. So let's start off by creating a brand new franchise zoo. Exciting. So franchise you can see here. Oh, let's just claim that daily rewards there. That's some leaf credits. But franchise mode, you can see here, I've definitely not done a lot in franchise mode at all been playing planet zoo since the beta and literally all i've got here is a couple of test zoos swan valley was my beta zoo because back in the beta that's all we had we didn't have sandbox for the beta profit testing came shortly after launch of the game and that's how i figured out how to make a profit in the game way back in the early days now franchise achievements i'm not sure i actually even have any achievements i've never entered one of the community challenges <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great prior me, aren't I? Yeah, nothing here. Animal breeding trophies. Now, I will have a few of these because I have bred animals in franchise mode before. I can't take that back. I'm not starting fresh, obviously. I have done some franchise modes and bred animals before, so it will record that and give me the stats for it. Anyway, we're starting this from fresh, as fresh as I can do at this stage, so let's get that new zoo going. I'm going to go with another temperate zoo. Temperate is one of the easier ones to go with and because this is going to be such a tough challenge I'm giving myself an easy job with things like the temperature. It's going to be tough enough with every animal. I feel like after about 50 we're going to start struggling so getting things like temperature, having the difficulty on easy, that's the only way we're going to do this. Name of the zoo, well it's every animal zoo so let's just stick with that. I'll add a one in front just in case anything screws up. Right, good to go. So let's create for 100 credits. No turning back now. <laughs> what have I got myself into? So here we are, the Every Animal Franchise Challenge Zoo. As you can see, we're starting off with the bog standard 40,000 cash there. What you will notice as well is that I am starting with a few more conservation credits than you normally would. And that's purely because I did play a little bit of franchise mode in the past and they just convert through all of your zoos. You don't start off with zero as far as I know if you played it before. So what's the plan going forward? Now starting out is a tough point. We want to avoid negative cash at all times so need a strong start. A couple of rules I'm imposing on this playthrough though. Firstly we're going to add habitats alphabetically so that means working down the animal list in the order that they appear in the Zoopedia. So that's starting with the A's, then on to the B's, C's and etc. Until we get down to, I think it's the Western Lowland Gorilla is the last animal in the Zoopedia. Another rule is that where possible I'll be creating combined habitats. So where animals can be housed together, we'll be doing that. That'll help with space requirements and it'll give us some good interspecies enrichment bonuses as well. Something else I want to do is have different entrances. Once we start getting a lot of visitors in, if you only have the original entrance, then you're going to run into problems because you've got a lot of people coming through the gates and trying to enter and exit at the same points. But if we search for it here, uh, guest, yeah, there you go. Far too expensive. We can't do it that at this point. That'll have to wait for future expansion. But what I can do, I can optimize the entrance as much as possible at this stage with the path in. 
So, little interlude here with a bit of a voiceover on how I've built the entrance path in. Throughout this series, I'm going to be switching between live play and doing some speed building and a voiceover that, so we've got something to talk about. I really don't want to bore you all to tears with hours of messing with pathing and doing different things with the habitats. But for a while now, I have been getting some comments saying that you guys do want to see how these things are built. So I thought for this series only, I don't want to just cut from talking about what I was going to build and then suddenly, oh, there it is, it's built. For a series like this, where how we build something is really going to affect the game and whether we're profitable or not. And if I make a mistake while I'm building something, that could potentially affect profitability. So I'm guessing we're going to want to see that. Hence, some parts of this is going to be live play, other parts I'm going to speed up the footage and do a voiceover. Which the first part is done here, we're done with the path, so let's flip back over to live play. What we've created here is a wide 10 meter path and it goes at an angle so that when guests come through, they're not trying to do any sharp turns which can slow them down in the motion of the walking. Two sides which will eventually house animals on both sides, but for now we'll just be using this side. Now it's time for our first animal habitat. We're going to be starting with the aardvark. Nice easy one to be starting with. Then buffalo and penguin, not too bad. And then, oh no, African elephant. Oh dear, African elephant this soon. That's going to be a struggle. Elephants are costly to keep, so we're going to have to be really careful with the money. We're going to have to try and build up cash before we get to that. A positive with our aardvark habitat here, we can house them with meerkats, so a good interspecies bonus there. So let's get started on that dual habitat. Indeed, another little voiceover for this bit. Now, initially with the habitats, I'm thinking purely about profit. This isn't about decoration and prettiness. We're going with the cheap materials, so that's going to be the brick walls, the Planet Zoo themed stuff. The habitats are going to be as big as they need to be, but not excessive. I'm also putting in null barriers where I can. That's a bit of a cheaty way to play franchise mode, because if you put in a null barrier, then there isn't as much for the mechanics to repair. Barriers in Planet Zoo degrade, but the construction pieces don't. So it makes a lot of common sense to use your own barriers where possible. To make sure we're getting maximum profits, I am optimizing this for the guest's experience rather than adding any extras where it's not needed. So what that means is no foliage if the animals don't need it. All habitats will have very clear viewing points. And what I mean by that is, when you put habitats in that have multiple viewing points, you have to make sure the guests can see from all of those viewing points. So when you have the main path that's adjacent to the habitat and that's where you want guests to go and view, if you have another path going up the side and that's against the wall that they can't see through, you have no control of where your guests are going to go to view the animal. Sometimes they'll ridiculously just stand at the side they can't see through, even though there's a great view on the other side. And we're trying to prevent that. So where possible, I'm trying to make sure there's only one area that the guests can view the animals from. Another tactic that I'm using with the animals is that we are going for the minimum numbers needed, not the maximum. That means for this habitat, we've got the aardvarks. We need one male, one female. And for the meerkats, that's also one male and one female. Had a small jump cut here because we're at the point now where the animals are ready to go in. But in order to get the animals in, we had to build the staff buildings at the back and we need to hire some staff too. My strategy with the staff buildings to avoid that negative impact that you get from staff buildings, they're always going to be at the back of habitat and they will never be next to guest paths. All these facilities will be set up into work zones. The work zones are really important when you need efficiency. So as you can see here, everything that we've built so far is going to go into work zone one. For work zone one, we'll put a couple of shops in there there as well some toilets if i need to set up electrical and water stuff at this point then they'll go into work zone one too and the staff members we've got going in here i'm playing it by ear i really haven't played that much of franchise mode so i'm not entirely sure how many staff are going to be needed per work zone i'm pretty sure the game will start letting me know pretty sharpish when i haven't got enough of a certain member of staff or facility those pesky warning notifications i've got all the notifications turned on with so much against us, I'm too scared to miss anything. So here goes. First animals are going in. Mr. and Mrs. Aardvark there. We're going with the best available at this point, And fingers crossed that means that they're going to breed okay. Oh yes, while we're here, 
Now, if you can see the trade center here, you'll notice that I've got a lot of panda bears in my trade center there. So I noticed this before when I was building. I've got a bunch of panda bears in my trade center because one of my old franchise zoos, I did a lot of panda breeding for some reason. So because the trade center is shared across all your franchise zoos, we're stuck with the pandas here. Instead of holding on to these or putting them back into an old franchise zoo, I'm just going to sell them on and use the credits. So when you see the jump in leaf credits, when I go back to the art box in a couple of minutes, that'll be why. So update, we are almost ready to go. I've preemptively added a couple of shops and the toilets as well. I'm confident guests will be complaining about not having those things when we open if I don't put them in. So here goes, aardvarks are in. That means we can select them now and change the habitat terrain and whatnot to suit their requirements. As I mentioned before, the initial habitats we put in are going to be very basic. We will go back to these and update them once we're a little bit more cash positive. But right out of the gate, it's more about making sure that the animals' needs are covered and the guests have got a great view of them. Aardvarks and the meerkats are pretty easy. They don't need any vegetation, which is great. All they need is the right terrain, a little bit of hard shelter and the right levels of food and play enrichments. Something I'll be starting straight away in the background once I've got the meerkats in is getting the vet to research the animal. Since I'd already had aardvarks in one of my previous franchise zoos, I've already researched aardvarks right up to the top level. So <laughs> lucky for me, I don't have to do that. Since I've never used meerkats before, they haven't got any research done on them. So that will definitely need doing. Speaking of, we are up to the point of choosing our meerkats and putting them into the enclosure as well. So here we go, meerkats and aardvarks living together. Bit of a strange combination if you ask me, but it's saving me some space, so I'm not going to complain. Ooh, and that's our first guest coming in. Didn't take them long. Fingers crossed we start getting some cash in. We're very cash poor at the moment, aren't we? Well, that didn't take very long. We've come across our first problem. The aardvarks are stressed. Because we've only got one habitat on the go at the moment, there's too much activity around the aardvarks and they're really stressed already. So we're going to take a risk. I'm going to have to spend a little more cash and put in a one-way glass barrier for them. This is a surefire way to get rid of the stress. I'm just hoping I can offset the cost with some of the ticket sales coming through and also the donations that are also coming through now. There we go, much happier now. Alrighty, with our first habitat set up and guest numbers seem quite healthy, I'm confident we can move straight on to our second habitat. It's a bit of a mixed bag this one. The African buffalo is happy living with many other species. Problem is, not all of those are happy living with each other. So, I've gone away and done a bit of a spreadsheet. Out of all of these animals here, I went away and figured out which of those will live with each other as well and also if there was any other in the mix as well. From that, I've come up with what I think is the optimal setup for having as many of these animals living together as possible. And that splits down into four different enclosures. For the African buffalo here, that means they get to share their enclosure with the common ostrich, now lechwe, and the reticulated giraffe. So quite a mixed bag for our second enclosure. I've gone with the same strategy for now, so very plain in the beginning. It does demand quite a bit of space as well because the giraffes take up a lot of space and there being four different types of animals all living in the same space too. The benefit for this is the animals take up less space as a group than they would if they were in their own individual habitats, and they're all getting a four-way bonus on interspecies enrichment. For this habitat, I have done a little bit more landscaping, and that was so that it's offering the guests a bit more of a better view. Because the enclosure has to be so big to accommodate all different species, and the fact I've stuck with the concept here that the guests can only view from one angle into the enclosure, I've shaped the landscape downward here to offer better view of the animals from that far away. This is where the terrain stamp tool can come in really useful. It can cut away the land close to the path very cleanly, then further back from this, if you add some of the terrain back in steps with the terrain stamp, you can then use the smoothing tool to make this look a little bit more natural. Once we've got a bit more cash in the bank, I can go back to this and add rock work and stuff to make it look even more natural. Right now, none of the animals in this habitat have any foliage requirements at all, so we've left it completely bare of that. The hard shots are going into this habitat, similar concept to the one we did for the aardvark and meerkat, just a bit bigger. It's very plain right now, but again, that's just a money thing. We will come back to this at a later date and spruce it up a bit. My thinking is I'm going to wait until I've got the African elephant in because I am worried about putting the elephant in this soon. 
If the worst happens when we put the elephant in and we start dropping money really quickly, we're going to have to respond to that super quick before it has a chance to tank us. That means either storing the elephants in the trade center for a little while, although I, I don't know whether that's cheating or not. Is that within the rules that I've set up for myself? <sighs> don't know. The alternative is trying to speed through some of the next animals. Sooner or later, we'll hit one that is a cash generator. I really don't want this run to end so quickly with an elephant. Anyway, that's the new animals going in now. Same process as with the aardvark and the meerkat, just making sure the landscape is the right terrain for them, they've got the right enrichment. I did notice that the buffalo needed water as well, which I didn't realize at first. Luckily, we had enough space to accommodate that. That essentially is the second habitat complete for now. And what I've done is I've just let the game run on for a really long time, generating quite a bit of cash so that we had more to play with when we started on our next animal, which we're getting to now. So it's time. We need to look at the African penguin. No interspecies enrichments for these guys. Let's see, how many of them do we need in a habitat? Six! Six of them all together. They're going to need quite a bit of space. So here we go, speed build for the African penguin. I let the game run for a fair bit of time with just the two habitats running, and that saved up quite a good bit of cash there. My reasoning for that is I wanted to be a little bit more decorative with doing the African penguin's habitat because there's things that I need to do now that I won't be able to change once they're in the enclosure. The penguins are a really good species to showcase the underwater viewing area for. This is a bit more of a setup with the landscape and the terrain than it is for the standard enclosures. You can make these where you make an underground tunnel and that's where you put the viewing area for the underwater bit. Personally, I prefer having the underwater bit at ground level and then raising the terrain at the back. That provides the area where the penguins are on land. To make sure the guests can see the penguins effectively from this setup, what I've got is I've got a little bit of a path at the front and that's where you see the underwater glass. Then at the side I've got a raised path and that's level with where the penguins are on the higher bit of terrain. Just like we did with the second enclosure, I find using the terrain stamp much easier for this sort of work. I find getting the right level of water in these type of enclosures. For the deep water diving requirements, it is a little bit of guesswork. When you add water, the game will give you the deep water measurements in meters, but the habitat requirements are in meters squared. So I really was scratching my head for a while thinking I had nowhere near enough water when I had plenty. <laughs> what you can see me fiddling with just there, I've had to add another water filtration system here. I have put one in already at the back of the African buffalo enclosure, but that one doesn't stretch far enough to get to where the African penguins are as well. So they've now got their own dedicated one back here too. The issue I'm having is it interacted just slightly with the raised guest path. So if I'd left it that way, it would have been giving guests negative impact when they were over that side of the path. The way to resolve this issue, you can decorate the facilities like this and that will reduce the area of influence. So we do get back to that and correct it in a little while. The design I've gone for with this habitat it's a little fancier than the other two habitats we've done so far, but I'm still heavily focused on this very basic planet zoo, breeze blocky, concrete kind of feel. I do like the idea of this being a budget park. I mean, 100% we're looking after the animals' welfare. They're all very happy at the moment. But I'm thinking for now, maybe across the whole zoo, we're going to stick with this very no-frills, budget-friendly, concrete jungle kind of feel you can definitely still get really in depth with that but i'm already pretty sure i don't think i want to go down the heavily themed route i've already done that in heaps of zoos since we're already doing this challenge in franchise mode i reckon it's okay to be a bit more restricted let me know what you think of that in the comments i mean of course everything's still going to be done to a high standard but I just don't have the desire to use stuff like the South American architecture or the African architecture this time around. I just want to build a nice zoo that looks like zoo buildings, structures and habitats that are made for the animals more than for the guests. Even though, of course, with this being in franchise mode, we're building everything to appeal to the guests more than anything else. 
I'm really hoping this penguin habitat, it's not going to end up with sucky views because they all go to the underwater viewing area and can't see the penguins. Fingers crossed the guests make their way up the elevated path as well because that will offer great views of the penguins. It's really interesting actually from not really working in franchise mode that much. It is actually quite a challenge to balance the animals needs, the money needs, the happiness needs against the creative process and wanting to create something that looks good. I do like the idea of using moderate height elevation and dipping down the height a little bit on some of the enclosures just to give a sense of depth and that's also great for enabling the guests to be able to see into the enclosures a little better as well. My personal experience, I found that if you leave it all on ground level, that's when you start having issues where the guests are saying they can't see the animals or they've got a rubbish view of the animals. I think we'll just have to wait and see if this one's successful. In terms of how long this franchise mode zoo is going to keep going, well, fingers crossed we do make it to the full set of animals. I'll keep going definitely until it fails in absolute terms. I am definitely still worried about putting the elephants in next. I just hope we get enough guests to support that kind of progress. There are some other animals that do pose somewhat of a concern. The ones that produce frequently and produce lots of babies in each pregnancy. Definitely going to have to keep an eye on them. These penguins themselves could be a bit of trouble in that way. What I think I'm going for strategy wise, well I'm going to try it first, is just letting them breed however they want. But as soon as the juveniles age up, they're getting sold for credit or cash depending on which one we're more short of. I suspect we might be lower on credits rather than cash for quite a while. All of the frontier animals, which you're rolling the RNG every time you select one of them, you pay for cash for those. The player zoos, they tend to offer better quality animals because they've been bred for sale. But some people can be quite unscrupulous and they will charge you 5,000, 10,000 credits for their animals, which is ridiculous if you ask me. Personally, I've already made the decision when we're selling animals on the market from this zoo, I'm going to sell them at face value. Whatever the game suggests, that's what they're going to go on the market for. This may mean that we do have less credits in our zoo, so I may end up having to rely on some of the frontier zoo animals to get by which I'll be paying cash for which I don't think that's going to be a problem for a while it all depends how safe our performance is over the next couple of years in the zoo anyway I'm getting a little off track that's a discussion for future for sure back to the penguin habitat I've gone with a stained wood building here for the hard shelter and save the headache later on I've automatically put in the one-way glass windows because it seems whenever I put a new animal in they automatically complain about being too stressed because there's too many people around the enclosure. This should hopefully stop that nonsense. If I recall, I think the penguins are a little bit more sociable than some of the shire animals as well. So let's see how they get on. The final sections here, we're finishing off this penguin habitat build just to hide the raised ground we've got going on around the edges. Lots more of the wonderful breeze block here. I've also added a little bit of clutter detail to the water filtration system. That's just enough to shrink that area of negative influence that was affecting the guests. So they should be happy now even if they walk right to the end of that pathway to see the penguins. Here we go, six penguins purchased from the market. Hopefully they like the new enclosure. Hopefully the guests also like the new enclosure. That's seven animals in total down now in this franchise. 100 plus to go. <laughs> Just need to change the terrain here so that the penguins are happy. They love sand, so as long as I fill this all with sand, they should be happy. Then we need to add some enrichment items. So a couple of toys in there, some feeders and stuff. And that should be us good to go now. Not a bad effort for a day's work. 18 years in game though to this point. Hey, I'm glad the staff don't get old and retire in this game. <laughs> oh, that wouldn't be fun. Something I've not mentioned is the amount of education that I'm building up in the zoo. I'm making sure that every animal has their own signboard. Each animal also has at least one audio speaker and I'm making sure they're not overlapping because that seems to anger guests for some reason. With just that, we're almost at four star education level with the seven animals we've got so far. So I'm fairly confident we'll be hitting the five star education not too long from now. I think it really does depend the amount of animals you've got. It helps to give them each some representation. So every animal franchise zoo, not a bad start. Three habitats, animals are happy, guests are happy. Next time we're faced with the treaded elephant enclosure. I'm hoping it goes well. I'm not confident it will. We'll have to see. Until then, cheers for watching. Bye for now.